Chapter 13, The Fetters Will Burst Alright, the updated map definitely updates things a bit from the danger standpoint. Away from the woodcutter camp, where you found rest for the ravens, Volka joins you as you stare into the woods. Don't tell me you're fine when you're not. You're still having those damn dreams. The growl, feeling less like talking... Oh, you growl, feeling less like talking than ever, but knowing the shield maiden won't let it drop. I keep seeing dredge in different ways. We're eating together, then they're gone. Once, I was teaching them to fight and they respected me. It's not me, but it feels like me. Volka watches you, listening closely. In the dreams, I feel old, ancient, strong. But then the dredge disappear, and I feel... What? Sad. Like an emptiness. Loneliness. Well, I happen to know all about loneliness among company. When you don't laugh, she just shrugs it off. It's just strange that you're feeling kinship towards Dredge. Have you tried talking to that stone singer we picked up? That would just get the feigned Valka involved. Zephyr will get involved regardless. If the map's right, we'll hit Old Ford and be at Valka Tower in Manahar soon. Let's just finish the job of getting this cart to Manaha. In other words, you're done talking about your dreams and feelings. You hold up your hand, sensing something amiss. Folka and you both scan the trees. There. You point, an ar you point to an archer loosing an arrow and dodge it, roaring a battle cry. It wouldn't be a bulwark chapter if we didn't start immediately with combat. <laughs> Um, we're outnumbered <laughs> a little bit. Oh, these guys are super weak. Ew. Well, as soon as it's Bulwark's turn, he can go on a killing spree and just start taking them all out one by one with his crazy ability. That's the point of this. Okay. The smart thing would be to position them close together then, so that she can do that. He can do that. And uh. Yeah, keep my shield maiden nearby so that she can increase his defense. Let's see. Oh, I forget about that. The shield maiden doesn't ha That's weird. The shield maiden doesn't have shield wall, so he doesn't get a bonus armor from her being nearby. Still, it's good to have her as a bit of a distraction early on. And then he'll just go in and start carving everyone up really fast. Give us your food and your weapons. Weak caravan morale causes minus one willpower penalty in battle. You trying to rob us? They won't live to learn their mistake. I was gonna say weak cavern morale. Uh, cavern? What caravan morale? I I've never had weak caravan morale. We were, we, were, we were kicking some serious ass, but then I realized the fact that uh, right, we kind of sort of had the horrible events of the cave destroy everything. Probably. Let's see. Yeah, Cole the weak. Should have no trouble just running through and culling the weak like crazy, right? At least a bunch of them, right now. Let's see, strength damage. Oh! You need to, you need to do rank 3 to do full damage, alright. So we should aim for people with set with 6 hit points and 7 armor. Otherwise we'll have a... Pro probably not be able to make the kill. Make our way over there. Seems like the next option, yeah. Call the weak. Yeah, the problem here is you do have to worry about how much... How much, how much willpower you have, because you can spam the same attack over and over again, but you can't keep, it, use, keep using it forever. Should I be using Bear Rage instead this time? Counter attacks plus lowers armor and causes fear in adjacent enemies. That may be the smart thing to do now. Rank two, temporarily lose two of their armor. Yeah. I'll do that. Wait, can I can I do it? Yeah, there it is. The second the second star didn't automatically appear like it usually does. Come and get me, buddy. 
What? Wait. Yeah, counterattacks. You... Did you forget to counterattack? <laughs> he just... He didn't counterattack. I, maybe I'm... Am I misinterpreting something? I thought he's supposed to counter the attack. Is what counterattack meant, I thought. Oh well. Um... Smart thing to do is just keep our teammate uh, safe, right? Yeah, adjacent allies take half damage. He's the big tough character right here, so we don't want him taking damage, especially since I can deflect it to my armor. Plus, ooh, and bonus armor. Fantastic. There's that counterattack. Oh, the counterattack still hits two people. That's crazy. That's that could be scary. All right. Oh yeah, her shield mastery won't last that long in this in this context, will it? That's kind of a bummer. Still, I could make use of it. Let's see. I could go for Cold of the Week, or I could just keep getting bonus hits off. I might as well Cold of the Week on this guy over here. Let's see. Pull the weak on this guy, because he's very weak. That'll give me a bonus action. With I can use to go after these two. Oh, he's he's hanging in there though. This is definitely the strength of being outnumbered, isn't it? Because they can't do that much to us in this situation. Might as well start picking away at them. That's adorable. He did one armor damage. It's almost like he's trying. Alright, uh... I have an exertion of two, so if I move right... I could be able to get, yeah, right in the right position to be able to attack two of these guys at once. Add one willpower for that bonus hit. That bonus damage, I mean, to take that guy down. Alright, now they're down to five characters. And they're all still pretty weak. I'm gonna keep picking away at some of these characters. I sort of double clicked on accident there. Alright. These characters aren't particularly tough, but those two are both 1 1s. Yeah, this does show how this. the formula of this game could be used to, uh. beat down crowds like this. The way that the specifics of how its uh, mechanics work sort of help hero mode. It's ninja logic, basically. Oh, uh, Strength damage minus two means I'm not going to be able to defeat them, huh? Alright. Just going for the hit then. They're all mostly weak anyway. They're trying. It's kind of adorable. They're trying. Oh well. Let's see who's going next. That guy, followed by that guy. Cool, so if I kill one of them, Bulwark still doesn't get attacked. But this is definitely ninja logic, where uh, one ninja's scary, but a hundred ninjas are cannon fodder. It's like, once there's just two of us alone, it's like, oh, look how tough we are, no one can take us. As we just flatten them while taking basically no damage. Definitely shows what it's like to have just completely outclassed your opponents on stats in this game. Because they just can't fight. They can't they can't hurt our strength meters at all. Which means that they just can't damage us for a long time. There we go. Success. Defeat three enemies with a shield maiden. I finally did it, apparently. 22 renown. One of the attackers is trying to hold together a wound across his stomach. He whimpers as you approach. Who sent you? You growl. We... We escaped. They left for Abring, left us in Galar. P prisoners, no food. We were starving. You end his life quickly before returning to camp with Volka. If they ran to a Let's group, they might have even been let in and been able to get something done, but instead they... Came to this group, where they were, unlik they were unlikely to get help, and they made the mistake of attacking us, which really hurts their chances for a number of reasons. Our poor, our poor morale. Can I help that a little bit? 
Yeah, look at that chipper dude over there. All right, Sigbjorn, we haven't seen him for a while. You find the Varl near an empty barrel, staring at the darkness. He would be drunk if there was more mead for him. What is it we're doing, Blood Axe? I mean, honestly, what's the plan rattling around in that head of yours? To get paid, like always. Yeah, and then what? Look at the sky. This isn't some crone story about the stars falling. This is the end of the line. Maybe so. But none of us knows what that means. Whatever comes next, I want us facing it with plenty of coin to our name. Bah. I guess that's what this life amounts to. Centuries of fighting and hoarding money for the day you die. You're about to walk away when Sigbjorn speaks again, quieter. Have you ever enjoyed any of this? Maybe a long time ago, but this is all I know. That's what I thought. Like we just do the same things every day because we don't know any better. We live so long that it's hard to remember when we stopped enjoying what we do. His words make you look, feel uncomfortable. Keep these ideas to yourself until we finish this job, are we clear? Sigburn nods quietly and stares back at the darkness in the sky. Valka Zephyr is speaking quietly to Volka when you approach. Not forbidden. Only rare for Valka to have children. So Nichols was... Like a son. He was not my child by birth. <laughs> oh my god, you can just be such a dick with this character. Which is kind of fun. <laughs> what did you do to him back in that cave? I did. The only thing I could do. The thing we never want to do. The Valka's eyes fill with tears. I forced a skip in the pattern, which we won't mean which won't mean mean much to you. Suffice it to say that menders usually repair skips or mistakes in the woven fabric of the world. They cover powerful, exposed threads until all is right and the pattern is whole. I did just the opposite. You stare at her blankly. By skipping nickels, I exposed a thread and used that power to end Eilis' attack. And that cost Nichols his life. Yes, but it is a sacrifice that every mender is prepared to make, should it be necessary. How do I know you won't try to skip me when we get to Manahar? Because I can't. It is a conscious choice of a mender a mender is taught how to make. Silence spans a few minutes. A brave kid, then. The Ravens will remember him in a battle chant. I'm sure he'd have liked that. Was there anything else you wanted to discuss? Any idea why Galler would abandon its prisoners? I have not had contact with the Council since I departed for Bindal, but it can't be good. If the prisoners were telling the truth about everyone fleeing to Abering, King Meinolf will have a serious problem to handle. I wonder if that girl Alette knows what she's, he what she's headed for. That's not our concern. What do you know about the darkness? The Valka stares into the distant sky. Truly nothing, though it feels wrapped in all the trappings of power abused, enough mistakes to ruin the entire weave. Your anger suddenly rises. More Valka secrets? No. Not on my part, but others perhaps. Luckily, we're heading toward one of the places with the answers. Enough talking. Let's get moving. Agreed. We need to get this card to Manahar soon. And we're not far now. Oh, now I'm sitting here wondering, are we are we going towards a situation where... You know, a certain someone, maybe in a Dragon Age sense, may have messed with the Fade because they wanted ultimate power and maybe is undoing the world around them. A little... and then maybe we need to start an Inquisition to fight back. <laughs> So we have a lot of supplies if I want relics, and this particular party is usually low on relics. 
But I don't know if I want anything here. Some strength and aggro. Which is not a bad thing to have for someone who has high armor, for example. Execution, uh... Exertion talents, range distance, it's a very slight crit chance. A little bit of a... Uh, ooh. 20% dodge of, of arm and 10% dodge of strength, basically. That's a decent chance of avoiding damages. Don't think I necessarily want to spend anything on these things right now, though. And we've already rested, so let's check how, how close we are to where we're going. Good to get an update on where we where we are now. There's Aubering right there. We're we're practically closer than the Let's group is right now. We came from Brunthal. Galar's where the prisoners came from. Definitely made a lot of progress since the big rift that split the party in the first place. But it was a rift. It was a rift in the land and in our story. Ooh, I am an idiot. <laughs> It is funny that the rift is the specific thing that split the party, though. Just... They, they can be a little focused in their thought process sometimes. These woodcutters were no slouches in a fight with those prisoners, Spar says, coughing. I've seen weaker men in, ward in Warden, and I think this group realizes their idea of staying here is a pretty bad one. Do you want me to recruit them? I bet we'll need all the fighters we can get. I've got a suspicion you actually like humans more than any other Varl alive, Sparl says, chuckling until he starts coughing and wheezing for, for air. I mean, we only have we have a total of four Varl, so it's not a crazy concept. Ooh, I should have trained more fighters. That's a good that's a good thought to focus on. Right. Several ravens report a large hole in the ground nearby. There are strange marks all around it, one says. Some look fresh, others, well... Others look like they've been there a long time at the mountains. Spar looks up. This hole have smooth sides, about as deep as a varl. He asks, the men nod, and Spar grunts. What's in the hole? We couldn't tell, a scout says. No trees around, just a deep hole in the ground about four yaks length across. My arms uh, were like chicken skin. Just looking at it. Alright. So there's two questions here. There are two, two possibilities seem likely. Uh, it could be that it's one of those sinkholes that the dredge just pop out of. It also could be... Well, I guess it could also be earthquake related. Or it could be those weird creeping things that we've been seeing that turn invisible. Which, I don't know, those might be burrowing types for all I know. Let's have a look, you craven. No sooner has the word left your mouth that you see Fulco look at you. Were you trying to be funny? Craven and Raven? You ignore he her and head for the hole. It's as described. Big, deep, surrounded by scrawlings in the surrounding rock and disturbing. T you can just toss a scout in. <laughs> That's kind of amazing. I'm going to do it. Toss the scout in to see what he finds. The man yelps as he falls into the hole with a pleasing thud. <laughs> they even say pleasing, because we're in the context of Bulwark, who just doesn't give a shit. He spits out dirt, swears loudly, and, and starts looking around. There's not a feigned thing down here, he shouts. Just mud, rock, and... He stops and bends down. Everyone leans in, straining to see what he's pulling out of the ground. And more feigned mud, he shouts, throwing two handfuls at others. Caught off guard, a couple of other men fall into the pit. The ravens start laughing and calling for a fight, and for a moment, the world seems familiar again. Unbroken. Huh? Our weird, our weird anomaly led to nothing but a morale boost, of all things. There's a surprise, huh? I am tempted to train more fighters. This seems like a, he seems like someone in particular who would not want to have such a big group of, of, uh, clansmen around. A large group of clansmen from Bindal have stopped, gasps and whispers among them. What's the problem now, you ask, breaking into their circle and finding a couple of pro uh, protectively holding a bundled baby. It's a curse, an omen, an old man says. The child's been replaced, changed, never seen anything like it. You wouldn't know a thing about this, Varl, but they do. He points to the couple and the others nod, a few women holding their children tighter. 
Maybe the darkness did it. Maybe they have dark secrets. It's a sad, hard thing to accept, but either these the, the babe dies, or we all suffer fiercely. Show me the kid. The father hesitates before pulling the swaddling open. You, ex Your experience with human children is minimal, but this looks like just like any other baby. Look at the head! Someone shouts. You lean down and see... Feathers? Over the ears. Small tufts of pale down, uh, down feathers. The kind you remember seeing on the neck and under the wings of earrings. Is if it's an omen, it's a good one. No one harms the child. The mother starts weeping and thanking you. Little Hoka, you, you mumble. The father smiles. That's what I call him, he says. Maybe the gods aren't... You walk off before I can finish. <laughs> he is the epitome of don't give a shit. But let's not all start just slaughtering each other in the street, because guess what happens next? Let's go ahead and train some clansmen to fighters. He'd go a little further, so let's have him do a hundred, because he totally would. We're fine on food. Train them. Send them in. Boom. Now we have 11 days to get somewhere or we're going to be short, but he seems like not someone who'd want to have a crew that's like 70% normal clansmen. So it seemed apt to me to go ahead and switch over. Where's that? Oh, there's the exit. I didn't, I'm like, where's the yawks? I'm looking for the yawks. He's got such a big group compared to a let's. Although we did lose a lot earlier. It seems like a lot of them came back though after the collapse. Like we lost less than less than initially seemed like. Oh no, the the one who lost a bunch was Alette because the the serpent thing happened and people scattered and they might come back. I always respected Big Lighter the Builder, but if he made those caves we went through, I'll, well, I'd have killed him myself. It looks to be a godstone made entirely out of slabs of shale, just carefully stacked on top of each other. Some nasty topography all around, the spiky rocks and stuff. Big layer of the builder. Look like look a little complicated to spell, so I'm kind of glad they said it out loud. <laughs> you knaves watch your step around these cairns, Spars says, hacking. Many a foolish pilgrim have given their life at the base of this frozen cliff. And don't try working one of those stones free, either, or you'll bring the whole damn thing down on us. He glares at Oli, who pulls his hand away from a stone quickly. The pieces of Big Lair's godstone, put together without mortar or daub, represent the mastery of the god's own skill. In life, he traveled the land, laying the world's cavernous foundations and raising mountains. He was ever regarded by the other gods with a wary respect. For one who knows how to put things together will always know how to take them apart. The sounds of snickering draws your attention, and you see some kids grabbing stones from the other cairns to build a new one of their own. Grab a stone and toss it to them. That would go so poorly for us here. I mean, he's... I, I play this guy as a brute, but he's also not stupid. We're, this is a giant Jenga tower, and we have an army of people standing under it. Let's not play it with the rock, rocks at all. So I'm going to shout at the kids to knock them off, to have them knock it off. Go on, you yell. The kids flee instantly, slipping on the ice, but making it back to the other safely. Spar chuckles. How do you think all these other piles were made? He places a stone on another cairn as you walk, as you start to walk away. An uneasy feeling washes over you, and you scan the raven's clansmen and bellower's cart for any threat. Blood axe, Spar says in a tone stripped of all humor. My eyes are too old to trust what I'm seeing down there. You follow his gaze and growl. On the distant fields below a mass uh on the distant fields below is a mass of dredge too numerous to count. Waves of them are pouring over the hills, though they don't move like an attacking force. There's a banner among them, Boca says, near you, but I can't make out the crest. You wave off her comment and roar a command. Move! There's just a giant force of dredge, but they have a banner. 
do Dredge have banners at all? Or is he somehow running around with a banner as if it's part of some other group? Are they zombified? Are we dealing with white walkers here where there's two where they're like a split group? Because in Game of Thrones, there's the wildlings north of the wall that are all these The Dredge are pouring over those hills like ants. You have to worry about the wildlings and stuff as being the, the brigands and stuff like that, but then there's straight-up white walkers, which are things that are basically ice zombies from the north. So I'm wondering if the fact that there's a banner among them might be a hint at the idea that there might be humans and Varl among the dredge. Whoa, what if the Varl King joins them or something? No, because... No, because when we got attacked, when the Varl King got attacked, that was a, uh... Yeah, at that, at that moment, that was in fact not... Dredge that I mean that was that wasn't any of the darkness that was just actual normal dredge with Bellower. The fighters at the front of the company begin hacking away at dense underbrush. We'll be here all day if the rest of you don't grab your axes and start chopping. One of them growls before wincing at a pain in his hand. Your hand going lame on you? No, the man says. It just felt like I grabbed a hot coal. He shakes it off, shrugs, and gets back to work. That seems like a trap to me. Oh. The plant's probably poisonous. If you get pricked by them, they probably burn at you. There's got to be a faster way around. We're leaving. The scouts search in various directions, but a day passes before any, uh, any other route is found. The clansmen don't seem to mind the rest, though. Sure seems like a problem to me. It seems like touching that the plants there were going to burn away at you. Like jellyfish, basically. The company comes upon a small village, the people still hard at work, with only an occasional glance skyward to the approaching darkness. Polka sees a man chopping wood, as she learned to do a lifetime ago. These people don't know what's coming. They'll figure it out soon enough, you say, and turn to the rest of the caravan. We get what we need from this place, and rest if necessary. The next few days will be the hardest and the last some of you will ever see. Polka gives you a look, and you snort. It's true. The world's coming to an end, we're being chased by a giant army, everything's dying, and we are low on supplies, sort of. A little, little bit. As you instruct a man to check the cart wheels and yak straps, you hear someone say, Um, hello again. You turn quickly to see the man ditch, quiet, as always, but wisely out of your immediate axe reach. <laughs> what do you want? You ask. Well, just that I was scouting around this place, you know, Ditch says. And I went up on a hill and watched the dredge and, um, banner we saw? It's from Einertoft. Einertoft. You grimace as the town's name floods your mind with images. A giant bridge, hundreds of varl, ivor in your way. Your anger focused just beyond him. Interesting. Interesting. So we did we did just go back to Einar Toft then. Wow. I kind of threw that out, out there at random, but I think we might actually have encounters with various elements of the undead Varl of some kind, if that's if that's happening here. If there is like a, some sort of thing bringing them up, if there if there's Varl among the Dredge, and this we're gonna learn something about the civility of Dredge and maybe the maybe because the destruction of the Varl happens off screen no matter what you do. It's possible that something happened and the two struck some kind of deal, for all we know. That'd be a fun surprise, to find out that the Varl and Dredge back there were talking to each other. Einertoft was sacked, the old war leader Krumer says. You'd better be as sure as crap stick- uh, be as sure as crap stinks about what you saw, human. Ditch nods quickly. Then I'm going after them, Krumer says. It's not a request. Let's see. I can send him on his own, or I can dis I can join him. I don't know. I'm pretty. F I'm pretty curious. I'm an, I'm an emotional and angry person. Join the old Varl, though it could be suicide. Stick with him. You growl to a few fighters you allow to join. If he's still as lucky as he claims, we'll grab the others and get back in one piece. What's going? Oh, maybe. The Oh, the dredge could have captured. I'm thinking. I'm thinking they're all walking together, but it could be that the dredge simply captured 
the Varl, which also teaches you new things about how, what to think about the dredge in the first place. Oh, hey. Sigbjorn actually has two unspent points. I probably leveled them up and then forgot, hit, forgot to hit confirm. Let's put a, point, a couple points into that crit. Or maybe just one point into crit and then another point into something else, because that, that, that first bonus is pretty nice. A chance to regen armor every turn is nice, although resisting armor damage... Huh? I mean, a turn happens every time, but I guess attacks can happen more often than once per turn, though. Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. I don't know if Puncture has any... My issue is I don't know if, if uh, Puncture has any impact on normal melee attacks. I'll give it a go. Confirm. There we go. I think I forgot to hit confirm last time. There we go. So this is my squad I'm going to go in with. Took, I had to go and sort through them for a bit to figure out who everyone was again, because it's been a while. I uh, want to give Ditch another shot, because when we first got him, I couldn't really stealth, because that pain in the ass uh, Eyeless character poisoned the entire party, and if he's taking damage, he doesn't stay in stealth. That's a bummer. Back is, ho is woefully underleveled. I'll go ahead and give him some renown. There we go. Uh... We'll just pump up that strength. His whole ability is that if he is surrounded by teammates, he can do some crazy crit damage on one enemy. And so getting that strength up is going to be a big deal for making that worth doing in the first place. Folka got enough kills to level up in that last fight we just did. And she'll be able to choose a second ability. Or, not choose, but just get. Whoa! <laughs> she just break her shield. <laughs> Boom, it's just gone. It disintegrates. That's violent looking. Smashes her shield against a single adjacent target. Target and all adjacent units, friend or foe, take break damage from the force of the attack. Without her shield, she loses her passive ability, Shield Mastery. Damn, don't know if I'll... Not entirely sure if I'd use that or not, but a lot of break damage could be good. Let's see. Yeah, it's break damage plus one to three, eventually. Uh... And it has an AoE, which could be good break damage, but I don't know if that's worth destroying your Shield Mastery ability, which stops you from taking strength damage at all. Either way, it's a byproduct of leveling up. Let's go ahead and get more of that, that armor up, which is like the core thing for her. And I could level up Krumer or Bulwark or someone. God damn, yeah, he's, he has so much experience he can just keep leveling forever practically at this point. You probably get some cool talents for him. Yeah, he currently has no talents. Let's go ahead and grab him a promotion. Goodbye, Renown. Ooh, ah, uh, I'm gonna go for exertion. Three exertions, good. It might. It's not a terrible idea to go a little further into his pool, but I can go for some nice crit or something. Yeah, bonus crit chance would be nice. He's the big scary character. I especially like the idea of, de of a 10% bonus crit chance because he attacks twice per turn. So he already... Ha if, I, if it works the way that it often works in games, uh, that seems like he already has a doubled crit chance during his average uh, attack anyway. So that could be... That could lead to a lot of really heavy damage just flattening hordes of enemies, potentially. It does lead to the unfortunate thing where... Uh, if a character is particularly good, though, he does just kind of hoard the experience, which is required to level up, which is a downside. I put this, the rogue at the beginning of the party because he needs to be standing next to his teammates to stealth properly. There's a lot going on over here. All right, let's check what everyone does. So we actually have two stone stingers this time, which we don't like. On top of poisoning people, they have those nasty, the nasty ability to give everyone the crazy bonus strength, which I don't want them to have. Ooh, this guy's 22 strength. That's also worth being worried about, but not a lot of armor. 18 and 22 strength is a concern. The Dredge Barb Hurler. A stone egg hatches into a Skulker if not destroyed. Oh, he can summon Skulkers. Interesting. Anything special about the Skulker? It turns invisible and stalks targets. It reappears and attacks, signaling packmates to attack the same target, but that doesn't matter unless they actually summon another Skulker. Can this guy summon? Yeah, this guy can summon, too, on top of being a tough character. Alright. Well, I think I think I want to set up our AoE-based character to be able to attack over here. Oh! 
A, sp a, a Tempest would be effective here, too. Ah. Uh, I kind of want to put a Tempest right in the middle of here, though. If you... Am I, lining, I think I'm lining this up correctly. If I can walk forward in the middle of this group, I could do a lot of Tempest damage, potentially. Meanwhile, I want this character to be able to go in here and attack both of these characters. Follow up with a Spear character, and they'll be able to take... A, they'll be able to work on whoever's left at that point. Maybe even both of them. The benefit of being Spear characters is that they can both, uh... We'll put this one up front. Since they're Spear characters, they specifically have the ability to, uh... Um... I get extra reach to hopefully be able to attack past each other if we if either of these survive. Because taking them out first is my priority. I don't want these guys getting, like, 25 strength or some nonsense like that. Alright. Put the stealth character sort of in position. Yeah, I'll just position him Krumer near the middle. Put the stealth character there for stealthing. The idea is, it, it, the idea is I want him to be able to attack this character to take down his strength, hopefully. No super high armor characters in the enemy party. Just turn on everyone's health bars, and good luck. Don't worry, bro, I got this. I also put, uh... I also put the girl in front, because she has the first turn order in this case. Alright. So your first move is you need to go into stealth mode. Which unfortunately uses up your turn. Slow attack, but ignore armor damage could be good. Alright, which ability is he using now? Shudder. Covers all dredge in the battlefield with volatile spikes that shatter on any impact. That's concerning. I don't like that. Did it already happen? One strength damage counterattack. Well, I, I'm not necessarily planning on ignoring- let it, letting you get away with not getting attacked, though. Regardless of what sort of tricks you try to pull. So, uh... Here I come anyway. <laughs> I'll take that one strength damage just fine. Boing, boing, boing. Oh, Stone Stingers are moving around already. That messes with my entire plan already. Son of a bitch. This part will work out, though. Tempest time. We're gonna have fun. Okay, initial stealth-based plan is kind of pointless, because it's not gonna reach that character, but I'm sure he'll find someone to target, right? Oh, two of those little guys, huh? Yeah, I can walk up here to try to attack both these guys, but there's a good- there's a chance I'll hit Moger, which is kind of a bummer. And not really any position I can stand in that won't be adjacent to a teammate now, because of that move that they made. Okay. Well, these two can both attack this guy, I'm sure, so... I'm just gonna get in position to, to, to land the two hits I might need to take this guy down instead. Nope, not quite. I, I even crit, but it didn't quite pull off. And now this guy tauntingly moves to the exact position I wanted him to go in to let me do what I was trying to do a moment ago. Yeah, this is not great. Not really, not super happy with my options here. I guess I'm just going for the hit on this guy because he's, he's too armored right now. No, let's take this one out completely. Let's work on taking this one down. Because then we can just remove one of the casters altogether before they start doing things I don't want them to. Can't reach him with this character, unfortunately. So we'll just head over here. Things got messy real fast based on turn order. There we go. With his armor down, Bulwark will make short work of him. Ooh, and actually Bulwark has two adjacent enemies and no adjacent allies right now, so... If it, if it comes to it, he'll get a nice opportunity. Um... Well, at this point, if, unless I stand around and don't use my turn, I'm gonna waste... ...stealth. I'm probably just gonna go break one of these eggs, rather than, rather than not do anything at all my turn. Rather take care of that than just then to keep waiting around for one chance to get a armor ignoring attack. Yeah, the rogue seems a little cumbersome, honestly. Alright, you, buddy, oh. I cannot get past your armor to stop you from doing what you're doing right now. Alright. And I have no adjacent ally to encourage, and I'm completely surrounded on every side. 
this guy's coming soon. I don't want him, I prefer him to not use skills though, so I'll go ahead and take him out. There we go. One stone stinger down, and the AOE revealed this little guy with this uh, hilarious little one damage. All right. This is clearly a Tempest situation. Oops. Uh, uh, choose you, it's, oops. Forgot to check the ability. Tempest. You want it to be clockwise to hit three targets, and only three. If I hit four, it hit my teammate, but three is these three. It'll kill this guy and the egg sack, I believe. Not quite the guy summoning. There we go. He's down to two, so we still be, might be able to stop him from summoning, depending on who who gets the opportunity to move. Is that... Oh, no! They moved perfectly so that my spearman has me trapped still. So I can't really make the move to hit anyone without directly endangering one of my teammates here. Well, I might as well cool the weak, just to get this guy out of the way, without spending a turn. There we go. Given the other options... Lowers armor and causes fear. Maybe I can use that to disrupt their ability, because I don't think I can properly... Ah, uh, no, not really. I can't take them down all the way. And the second hit's just as likely to hit my teammate as him. Which I'm not really trying to do. Let's go for bear rage. Oh, he's still doing his ability, so it, 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 it humorously makes him move, but does not stop his ability from triggering, apparently. Alright, there's also a new enemy here, because this guy got his summon off. We're a little stuck trying to cumbersomely move past some of my units here. But, uh, they're not... Oh, yeah. Ooh, the counterattack hurts your teammates, too. Gotta watch out for that. Step away from our scary friend over here. And do, see what we can do about the Stone Singer. Ow. Not appreciated. It is now Ditch's turn. Um. Ditch cannot reach that character. Ditch has an exertion of two, so he can't finish off this guy, but he also can't reach the bad guy. His only ability is track. So we can't really do much with that either. At this point, my, my best move might just be to clear this guy out of the way so Sigborn can attack somebody more worth attacking. Uh, dice roll, please. Yep, got it. Now Sigborn, on his turn, can probably move closer to a proper target. Unfortunately, Krumer is very injured. So he's not going get to get a ton done on his turns. Uh, a few exertion means I can take a chunk out of this guy's armor, though. Yep. That should more or less guarantee a kill from Sigbjorn. It was worth doing, because he was about to get bonus strength, and I don't want that to outclass this guy's strength. There we go. Gotta be careful, though, because I might be giving them the advantage a little bit, because they're packed into this corner over here, and as I destroy more of their units, they get, the, they, they get more actions. But, it's my turn, and I have scary abilities. Let's see, Cole the Weak. There we go. So I still get to keep my turn, which means I get to wail on this guy now. Oh, but he's got obnoxiously high armor. Uh, my willpower is at one. Spend a couple of those to get my willpower up. I'll take out seven of his armor, and then we'll have a random follow-up attack. There we go. That went exactly how I'd hoped it would. And, oh, Spearman's still staying standing. I'm gonna get right up in there so that hopefully Krumer doesn't get blocked. I could have stopped at the maximum spear range, but if I, if I walk past him, there's more capability for people to target this guy on their turns. And he's the only one left. Oh, wow, Ditch gets to get, get the final blow, huh? Congratulations. Managed to keep everyone from going down, although it got, it got close with our with our spearmen. Got three tracker kills, which gives us bonus renown. Ooh, Sigbjorn's up for promotion too. 
Not gonna get my any uh. We're not gonna get any uh debate here, or complaint. The mangled appearance of a varl stands in front of you, long enough to shout. You want me to? S you want to stare at me or get out of this fain mess? He and the other varl fighters lope past you with all the strength they have left, knocking away any dredge that gets you close. So that's. That's Fasolt, right? He's supposed to be dead. <laughs> like, he's supposed to be really dead. I, I mean, I didn't see him die, but Rook was told by someone that he died, and that seems to not be the case, because... Hi, Fasolt! You've been gone for more in, than an entire game's length of game now. Once back in the village, uh, the, uh, the deep tones of the scarred Varl utter curses you've never heard before, then he sees you. You the feigned leader of these pathetic humans? The shield banger asks you. These humans are the ravens, you say. And I'm Bel- Uh, Bulwark. Oh, he thinks he's- He's even saying Bellower out loud now, that's not a good sign. Who are you, and why do you look like you were spit out by a cold bear? The Varl stares at you, and then cracks what might be a smile beneath all the facial wounds. Fasolt. Former commander of what was Einartoft, he says. You might recognize this one beside me. You glance at the Varl, one with barely any horns or, or beard. Kvig, you ask. One in the depths? Kvig is the youngest Varl, the last one made. We're all that's left of those who fled Grofheim and stood against Bellower and Einartoft, Fisholt says. Kvig? Run and get us some damn drinks and some meat. Bulwark and I need to talk. 